Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today we're working on a new project. I don't know if you can tell where you are. Hopefully you can't, because if you can, that's not good. You're in the back of a cop car. This is actually a 2005 Ford Crown Victoria P71. Just picked it up for my buddy who is a police officer and we're converting it from a normal Crown Victoria to a police car. We picked this up for a great price, but it does need some work. And the few things that we're gonna do in this video today are gonna increase the value significantly, let alone make the car look a lot better. So let's take a look at this Crown Vic. So we have a 2005 Ford Crown Victoria. This is a P71, which means it's upgraded for the police. It has an upgraded suspension, heavy duty alternator, bigger radiator, oil and transmission coolers. The ECU is tuned differently to allow for tighter shift points. There's an upgraded torque converter, it has upgraded brakes, upgraded rear differential gears. This is a 327 to one gear ratio. It gives you quicker off the line acceleration. We have a special pursuit rated aluminum drive shaft to handle high speed driving. There's a stainless steel dual exhaust without resonators, which sounds awesome. And then there's a fire suppression system in this 2005 P71. So those are most of the upgrades included in the police package. Let's go check out the interior. On the interior of the car, we have front cloth bucket seats with a brake in the middle, even though the shifter is found on the steering column. This allows for adding a center console, which the police use for a radio, computer, and other police gear. Above the center console area is a classic map light police use to do paperwork in the vehicle. On the dashboard, we can see the speedometer goes to 140 miles per hour, and the speedometer is calibrated and certified. The rear has vinyl seats, which makes it easier to clean, and the rear doors only open from the outside, so if you're a criminal, you can't get out. Two neat features to note that this car has is the front driver's seat is a powered seat, which is a rare option, and there's also a tow hitch on this car, which is a useful option. Now this P71 was used as a detective's car, which is good because you don't want a patrol car. Even though this one has 100,000 miles, if you have a patrol car, that doesn't tell the true story because patrol cars are used at idle a lot. So the mileage might be 100,000 miles, but the hours on the engine is potentially a lot higher. As you can see with this car, we're missing the front grille and the headlights are filled with water and very hazy. In addition, the spotlight does not work. Now that you know what a P71 is, let's start Project Police Interceptor. In the first episode of Project Police Interceptor, we're going to put in new headlights and a grill, and fix the spotlight. So let's get started. We're trying to do this project on a budget, so these headlights are from PartsMax. They specialize in aftermarket parts and have great deals on headlights. Plus, they were able to ship these to me quickly. And then the grill we found in pretty much brand new condition at a local scrapyard that junks New York City taxis. They wanted 30 bucks and we talked them down to 10. If I wasn't able to find a good condition grill at the scrapyard, I was going to get the grill from Parts Max too, but we lucked out and found a good one. So enough talking about the new parts, let's get down to business. I'm going to go show you how easy it is to transform the look of the car and significantly increase the value of the car. So to get access behind the grill, we need to take off this shroud right here. And this literally just comes right out just like that. They make it nice and easy for you. And then we have access to the headlights as well as the grill mounting points. Let's go do the headlights first. So to remove the headlight, we have two wiring harnesses back here that we need to remove. Just get your flathead screwdriver. And this brown one just has a little button right here that you press down and you pull this out. Now there's these two tabs right here. You just pull the tab straight up and that'll come out. Do the same thing for this one. Might help if you use a pliers. And then this headlight will come right out. Just like that. You can see the previous owner had moisture issues, so they used a bunch of silicone at the top. So we're going from this to that. The new headlights come with the high and low beam bulb, but we need to put in the yellow running light bulb. Just gotta remove that seal. So we're gonna take out this bulb right here on these headlights, just turn it and wiggle it out. We'll grab our new headlight, get the bulb in, and then make, make sure you turn it. This one actually takes a decent amount of force, creates a nice seal so you don't get water in here. Now we could take our headlamp, slide this in. So we'll do this side first, put it through like that, and then slide this down, just like so. Might take some force to get it in there, but it locks right in place. Now we're going to do the other ones. Same idea. Just 
Okay. Now we just have to plug this in and we're done. Goes in like that. That one clicks in like that. We'll turn our headlights on. Here's the old one. And here's the new one. Beautiful. Now we'll do the other side real quick. So we got our old headlight, put in our new headlight. And look at that, so much nicer already. Now let's get this grill on. So the grill is pretty simple. On the bottom, it clips in, and on the top, it bolts in. Here's the back of the grill, you can see, here's the bolts. And here's the bottom, here's the clips. So first thing we're going to do, line it up, just like this. Good. Now looking from the back of the grill, if we look, you can see here, there are one, two, three, and four bolt studs. Then we have these nuts. We're going to go right on like that. That's one. That's two, three, and four. These bolts are 11 millimeter. Just gonna go tighten them down. Good. All we have to do is get our little guard here. It slips right in. And we are done. Check out the transformation. This is before, this is after. Let's see it one more time. Old beat up Crown Vic, cop car. Okay, with the transformation done, we have one more thing to knock off the list, and that is this broken spotlight. I'm gonna guess either the bulb is burnt out or there's a wiring problem and we're not getting the 12 volts here. To find out, let's take it apart. The lens is held on by three Allen head screws, and it pops off just like that. So already I noticed something wrong. The red wire is supposed to be attached to a terminal in here, but all I see attached is the ground. So I'm gonna take the ground off and we'll get a better look. So here's our ground, and our red wire is supposed to attach right in here. You can see here's a plastic coating which prevents the black and red from touching. So let's reattach the red wire and make sure the light works. Now we'll connect our ground, and let's try this light out. So there we go. The whole reason the light wasn't working was because that disconnected red wire. So I just want to make sure you guys understand how this light bulb works and how this whole wiring setup works. It's really easy. Here's the back of our light bulb. We have a red wire. So this is our power wire, which goes into here. And that's what turns this bulb on. So our power wire supplies power to the bulb. And after power goes through the bulb, it exits the bulb through the ground wire, which is this right here. So you can see right here, here's our ground wire, and it grounds right to this bolt right here, which just grounds to the frame of the vehicle. Now, interestingly, there's a little tab right in there. I don't know if you can see it too well, but that tab right there, that's your power. So in between the ground is your power, that little post right there. And this power wire coming from the light bulb needs to go around that post and it wasn't there, which is why we weren't getting power. So this fix is really easy. We're just gonna get our power cable from our light, push that on there like that, and then just crimp it down so it doesn't go anywhere. So with that red wire attached, we'll attach our ground, sneak this back in here, attach the trim, screw the three screws into the trim to hold the light into place. Now let's see. Beautiful. Move it around, make sure it doesn't fade in or out when it gets vibrated a lot. Nope, good. Fix the light. So we did a lot and made Project Police Interceptor significantly nicer than it was. The headlights from Parts Max and the grill from the junkyard really completed the car. And what's a cop car without a working spotlight?
Project Police Interceptor is really coming along. Hopefully you enjoyed episode one of Project Police Interceptor. If you like this, there will be a few more episodes in the series where I wire up a siren, testing one, two, the install undercover red and blue police lights, as well as some other surprises. And this gets very loud. <laughs>